If sin is breaking laws that function like human laws, though, and if, if that's your model, God's got rules, rules require punishment, the punishment is death, then if that's your model, then what, what would justification be? It would be some legal uh, adjustment. It's a legal process. You have to get the legal payments and, and, and so forth. This is what the theologians argue. If it's design law, though, then what is justification? Fixing what's broken. Restoration. To the Restoration. So this week, I discovered a lecture given to a... Uh, uh, I discovered... It was five months ago, there was a lecture given to a group of pastors by a theology professor who spoke for over an hour, and the entire talk was focused on what, what we teach in here and how it's wrong. The entire talk was a, was a, was a um, exploration. Are you referring to this class? This, well, this class and me by name. Oh. And they would take stuff from our website and show it out of context and criticize. But they talked about justification. And they said, and this is, this is the found, one of the foundational rationales for their position, the word justification is legal language and therefore requires a legal explanation. This was one of the foundational reasons. Because justification is legal language, you have to have a legal explanation. There's several problems with the theologian's explanation. First, the Bible was not written in English or Latin. And therefore, the word justification does not exist anywhere in Scripture. It's a translated word that was supplied by the translators. And supplied by those who, when they translated, already had a legal bias believing God's law functions like ours, so when they translate, they read into it legal stuff and thus use legal words. Secondly, though, even if we accept the justify word, legal definitions are not the only legitimate and accurate definitions to the word. Justify also has the meaning when your margins are out of line and you line them all up on the edge of the page, what did you just do to your margins? Justified. You justified them. Was that a legal action? No, that was an actual moving. You actually changed something to put it in line. So justify also means actually making an action that takes something that's out of line, out of harmony, out of place, and putting it back where it belongs. That's justifying. <coughs> and there's another justify. It also means to show or to demonstrate or to prove an action or position or a person or a claim is right. To justify why this is the right thing to do, okay, it also means that. The legal view of justification being a declaration, not a demonstration, that's what they'd say. It's a declaration. It decla we declare. Justification is God declaring. The legal view is not biblical. I will tell you right now, it's a lie. Based on a lie that God's law functions like our law, the other two views are biblical. Setting right and demonstrating the rightness of God. In fact, Paul, in Romans chapter 3, 25 and 26, uses justify for God proving or demonstrating that he was right. The third definition that we went through, and this is out of the Good News translation, uh, 25 and 26 of Romans 3. God offered him so that by his blood he should become the means by which people's sins are forgiven through their faith in him. God did this in order to demonstrate that he is righteous. By the, word, by the way, for those of you who know Greek, the word righteous is the same root as just or justify or justification, rightify, make right, righteous. Same Greek, dikaio, dikaio, sune. All right. In the past, he was patient and overlooked people's sins. But in the present time, he deals with their sins in order to demonstrate his righteousness. In the NIV, it says to demonstrate his justice. Do you hear justice and righteousness the same? We typically don't hear them the same. It's the same Greek. That's where I talk about the supplied legal kind of mindset leads to w words like justice, but righteousness is the same thing. And rightly understood, it is the just thing to do to fix or heal what's broken. Keeping going. In this way, God shows that he himself is righteous and that he puts right everyone who believes in Jesus. Or, if you remember the old King James, in this way he shows that he is just and the justifier of those who believe in Jesus. Remember that language? That's old King James. He is right, he is righteous, he is just, same thing. And the rightifier, or makes righteous, or puts right, or justifies, it's an actual making a change in them, is what the Bible is teaching. That's the second definition. The first definition of a legal declaration, non-biblical. 
I'm going to give you evidence for that, though. Don't take my word on it. I don't want anybody to believe because Dr. Jennings said it. Which, by the way, is different than what was in that lecture. In that lecture, one of, one of the other foundational positions was, we have a degree in theology, we've studied theology, and therefore this is our expertise, you should believe because we've studied theology. Dr. Jennings is a doctor, they said this. He doesn't know about theology, you shouldn't listen to him. <laughs> you know my approach has never been to say believe, even when I do my mental health lectures. When I do my mental health lecture, I said, I'm a doctor, I've studied psychiatry, believe because I'm a doctor. Do I ever do that to you guys? No, I would say here's why and here's the reasons and here's what's happening, come to your own conclusion. So justify can mean something legal. It can, that in the English language, that's what the word can mean. But it also can mean setting things right and proving one is right when they're setting it right. We cannot tell from the word itself which meaning is correct. So if you go with a legal mindset already preconceived, then you'll come away with a legal conclusion. So from Wikipedia, which does a really good job of defining penal substitutionary views of justification by faith, this is what a uh, little couple paragraphs say. Sola fida, which is Latin for by faith alone. Sola alone, fida, faith. Also known as justification by faith alone is a Christian theological doctrine that distinguishes most Protestant denominations from the Catholic Church and Eastern Orthodox Church and some parts of the Restoration Movement. The doctrine of sola fide, salvation by faith alone, or justification by faith alone, asserts God's pardon for guilty sinners is granted to and received through faith alone, excluding all works. All mankind is asserted, it is asserted, is fallen and sinful under the curse of God and incapable of saving itself from God's wrath and curse. But God, on the basis of the life, death, and resurrection of his son, Jesus Christ alone, solus Christus, grants sinners judicial pardon or justification, which is received solely through faith. Faith is seen as passive, merely receiving Christ and all his benefits. Among the benefits are the active and passive um, righteousness of Jesus Christ. Christ's righteousness, according to the followers of sola fide, is imputed or attributed by God to the believer, b believing sinner, as opposed to infused or imparted. It, you know, imputed versus imparted. We're going to get to that later in the lesson. The legal view, imputed. He, he accounts it in some legal way in a, in a book in heaven that he puts the, the registry in, uh, of Jesus' perfection in yours and then declares in a legal setting that you are now considered legally righteous even though you haven't had a change and you're still not righteous. That's imputed. The imparted would be the change that happens in you. So, Martin Luther, who was the father of the salvation by, or justification by faith alone, opposed the Catholic teaching of righteousness by a combination of Jesus' sacrifice and our works. Luther's position was that our works of penance, pilgrimage, offerings, abasement, flagellation, or any other work could not set us right with God, could not justify us. We, in this class, agree completely. There's no work we can do that adds to the work that Christ has done to fix and heal what's damaged in sinners. We agree completely. There is no added work. Our justification is by faith, trust in Christ alone. There's no question. The question that separates our position with the legal penal view is not whether we can contribute to our own justification, because we cannot. The question is, what is justification? <laughs> That's the question. Is it legal or is it actual? Something that actually happens for real. Is it declared but not experienced? Or is it declared only once it is experienced? This is the big divide. The theolo theology professors in this community teach that justification is declaring someone to be righteous even though they're not. That if you've experienced it, that's not justification, that's sanctification, that's, impute, that's imparting, not imputing, and they make this distinction between the words. And the reason this divide exists, the foundation or the root of this division, how do you understand God's law? If God's law functions like human law, then legal actions are necessary. You have to have a judicial process, you have to investigate, you have to look at the records, somebody has to pay the price, the law has to be maintained. How do you maintain the integrity of the law? Well, the law has no teeth, it has no power, it has no meaning if there's no punishment. If we have a speed limit in College Dale for, and, and do they have a speed limit in College Dale? Yeah, everybody knows, right? Okay, if they have a speed limit in College Dale, 35 miles an hour, but 100% of people who do 40, 50, 60, always get off. There's never, a, there's never a ticket written. There's never a consequence. Then that law becomes meaningless. 
So if you're operating under that model, then you have to have impositions of penalties or else the law becomes worthless and meaningless. And so God's law is not worthless and meaningless, so he has to punish. This is level four moral development. Law and order. And thus justification is the righteousness of Jesus imputed or declared to the legal records in the courtroom of the sinner. Further, those who hold that view accuse us of teaching moral influence theory. 